A 65-year-old dual citizen of Australia and Greece remains in custody in Italy after he was arrested in Rome this week over the infamous Easy Street murders in Melbourne nearly 50 years ago. Homicide squad detectives are now working to extradite the man to Victoria, but legal experts are warning the process could take years. Donald Rothwell is a professor of international law at the Australian National University's College of Law and he joins us now. Now, Don, thanks for being with us. A case of great fascination, of course, through 47 years now. And the suspect has made a judgment call, perhaps in his case, a mistake in deciding to travel from Greece to Italy. At least that's the police version, tripping an Interpol movement alert. What needs to happen now for extradition to be completed? Well, most importantly, Greg, uh, the suspect has been detained by the Italian authorities. Uh, they've done so in reliance on, as you said, an Interpol red notice. So the onus now falls upon uh, Victorian police, who've obviously had an arrest warrant out for this individual, which was the trigger for the Interpol red notice. They'll then need to formally seek from the Commonwealth government uh, an international arrest warrant by way of an extradition request uh, directly to Italy. Uh, that will be received in Italy and then we'll see legal processes before the Italian courts. And I suppose precedent as to the length of these processes would vary from case to case, but what can you tell us about the practice of extradition between Australia and Italy in recent years? Greg, it always comes down to whether or not the accused person seeks to consent to extradition in which case they could possibly be returned to face trial uh, in Melbourne um, fairly shortly. But let's face it, in the majority of cases, most people contest extradition and that can then see uh, their process go before uh, courts, in this case, the Italian courts, and possibly go up various levels of appeal within the Italian court system, depending on the strengths or weaknesses of their appellate arguments. So it's really very difficult at this very preliminary stage to give any sort of sense as to how long this process could arise if the matter ended up before the Italian courts because there were appeals and challenges to the extradition. How dependent are we on the particularities of Italian law surrounding the sorts of charges we're talking about here? That, that is to say, Don, are there statutes of limitations in that country uh, that could be brought into the argument? Well, the basic framework is, of course, the extradition treaty, which Australia has with Italy. Uh, so that's reassuring. Um, but yes, there can be some particular issues that can be raised in terms of Italian extradition law. Um, the possibility of a statute of limitations being relevant in the case of an historical crime like this is certainly a live issue. But the fact that the Italian police have detained this individual on the basis of the Interpol arrest notice, I think should give some reassurance uh, to that. Um, there are always a series of technical issues that arise with respect to extradition matters, such as uh, double criminality, uh, whether or not there's a political offence in play. Uh, but on the basis of the information that I have, I'm doubtful whether they would be uh, significant impediments to extradition arising in this instance. And can you compare and contrast the circumstances between Greece and Italy for us, Don? I said at the outset that it might have been an error of judgment in the suspect's interests anyway to have made that trip and tripped the alert with Interpol. But what might have happened if he had stayed in Greece? Well, yes, you're right, Greg, to allude to that issue. And it would seem that the individual had some level of immunity whilst they remained in Greece. Now, there are two distinctive factors there. Uh, one is what we've been advised is a possible issue with respect to the historical nature of these crimes and effectively a statute of limitations, which might have been relevant in terms of Greek extradition law. Uh, but the other information that we have is that the individual in question is a dual Greek Italian citizen and some countries are very reluctant to even consider extradition of their own nationals. So those are two distinctive aspects that apparently now are not in play, uh, given that the accused person has uh, travelled to Rome.
Mm. It's being very closely watched and it's only in its infancy now. Don Rothwell, we thank you for sharing your expertise once again. Thanks for joining us. Good to speak, Greg.